Howdy folks. So this is a uh, little supplementary video to the uh, the one I made uh, about installing this uh, SAS HBA. And uh, I wanted to make this video separate because uh, I, I didn't want to make that video too long and because I think there are, are uh, some people who could benefit from just this information alone without all the rest of uh, my rambling. So uh, anyway, I have this uh, cute little uh, mini ITX system here. And uh, it's uh, just running uh, an Ubuntu uh, Live CD right now. And uh, it has two 4 gigabyte sticks of uh, G-Skill memory in it. So it has a total of 8 gigabytes of RAM installed. And uh, in case you uh, don't believe me, I can, uh, I can just show you right there. Um, total memory, 8 gigs. So it, uh, it does have all the memory populated. It's all been mem-tested and uh, all that good stuff. This thing's just sitting on my floor because it's not... Uh, hasn't been installed in its little embedded system yet. And uh, yes, it's on the floor, and no, it's not hazardous to do that. I really should make a v video about ESD at some point to dispel all of the rumors and stuff. Uh, but anyway, what I want to show is what happens to this board uh, with regards to memory when I install this card. So I'm going to shut the board down, and I am going to uh, I put this board in. Okay, so I've powered the board down, I've installed the uh, HBA, and uh, as you can see, I still have the same two uh, dims of memory in here, have not even touched them. Well, okay, I just touched them now, but I have not touched anything else. Uh, the card's fully inserted, and uh, I'm going to power up the board, and uh, I'm actually going to show you on the monitor uh, what happens when I do this. So I just got to use a screwdriver because I don't have a power button on this board. Okay, so the board is booting. Okay, so you can see uh, we've got the LSI BIOS. It's going to do its thing. There's nothing plugged into it, so uh, it just has to boot. And we don't really care about that. Now look at this. It says CPU or memory changed. Press F1 to run setup. Well, I didn't change anything. So let's press F1. And if we now look, memory size, 4 gigs. So what happened? Why do I only have half the memory? And I mean, I haven't changed anything. You can see, uh, I still have two 4 gig DIMMs in here. And if I pull this card out and reboot, it'll go back to 8 gigs. So what is it about this card that's causing me to lose, effectively, one stick of memory? And I, I'll tell you right away, I know what the problem is. Uh, it's actually disabling um, the second channel of the memory controller. And uh, why is a little bit interesting. And there is a way to fix this, and uh, that's what I want to go over. So let me take this card out and uh, uh, I'll explain it a little bit further. So what's going on here is uh, when the board, uh, when the BIOS, or in this case the UEFI of the board, starts up, it scans what's known as the SM bus. And SM bus is a type of um, uh, communications protocol. It's actually a subset of I squared C, the inter-integrated circuit protocol developed by Fizit, uh, Philips. And SMBus was, if I, I remember correctly, I believe it was developed by Intel. And it's just a subset. It's basically a, a stricter set of, restri uh, of uh, restrictions that are placed on I squared C. Uh, and it was designed to make the protocol easier to uh, interoperate with other devices, basically. Um, for example, it imposes something like a, a maximum transmission length and things like this, which just makes it easier to uh, to talk to other devices because you know that they're going to follow uh, all these um, parameters. Now, anyway, SMBus is used to do some detection of devices in a bit of configuration. And uh, PCI Express uh, has SMBus capability. So this device will actually communicate with the UEFI on the board um, over SMBus during power-up. And so will memory controller and all sorts of other things. And what's happening is the, uh, the, this particular HBA and a, a bunch of other HBAs like it, um, they will actually interfere with the SMBus communication 
uh, to do with the memory controller and potentially other parts of the board. There are boards that actually, not only will they just have reduced memory, they won't even boot at all. Um, usually they'll put out a beep code or something. So um, it's, it's, it's quite bad, and it, it's sort of due to sort of, sort of bad design on the part of these HBAs. They haven't really... Um, uh, they're not really up to, to date with uh, the sort of modern standards of these boards. So generally you'll see this issue on more modern boards, uh, particularly boards that have UAFI on them. That's sort of the, the way to tell uh, if, if you're, if you're going to see this problem or not. But some boards will be fine. Uh, some boards may have an issue, but you just never notice because let's say, you know, maybe if I only had one DIM in here, I would never know that there was a problem with, uh, with, uh, with that. But there is a way to fix this. Um, and it's, it's kind of kludgy. But um, as far as I know, there isn't a more elegant solution. And the solution is basically to block this card from being able to communicate on the SM bus. Now, this is totally okay, and the card will function just fine without being able to talk on that bus. Because, of course, it's just used for a little bit of configuration information. It's not used for any of the bulk data transfer or anything like that. So the card will appear to work fine, however, the board will work correctly uh, with this fix. And the fix is, uh, well, basically, like I said, it's just blocking uh, SM bus. So what you need to do is basically somehow uh, basically mask off the pins of the PCI Express connector, which correspond to SM bus. And uh, I've marked them here with a little bit of black, which is kind of uh, rubbed off. But uh, basically, on the side of the card... Uh, with that's populated, so basically the side of the card that faces down, if you insert it into a motherboard that's vertical, uh, the fifth and sixth pin from the end of the card, those are uh, both basically the uh, SDA and SCL, uh, the I2C clock and data pins, and you want to mask those pins off such that um, they can no longer make contact with the pins in the in the uh, socket. So there are a couple ways you can do this. Um, what I prefer to do is I prefer to use a little bit of tape. Um, some people have used things like nail polish, varnish, and other things like that uh, to create like a hard coating on here. Uh, really, whatever you you really do whatever you want, as long as uh, it won't melt or uh, get mushy and jam up the socket, uh, because that would be really horrible. You take this out and you've got some glob of let's say you know molten electrical tape, because you know electrical tape kind of goes liquid after a while. Um, and it would get stuck in there, and your socket would be fucked. So um, I would recommend using uh, something that won't do that. Maybe maybe something like clear sellotape, uh, like packing tape, things like that. Um, anything that doesn't conduct electricity should be fine. There's no high voltages there, so it's uh, not a big deal. And uh, generally what I like to do is I like to overlay uh, overlay the tape and then use an X-Acto knife to cut it to exactly those two pins and uh, I usually like to also fold it over the end, uh, over the bottom, because when you insert this, you don't want the pin in the socket to sort of catch the bottom of the tape and rip it off. So I like to fold it over the bottom and just sort of uh, end it right on this side. But remember, you can't cover the pins on this side because they're completely unrelated. You need those. So it can't go all the way around, but I like to have it at least at the bottom so that uh, the, the pin in the socket doesn't catch it. So I'm going to get some, uh, I'm going to go find some tape make that little uh, little uh, cover and uh, we'll reinsert in the board and I'll sort of just prove to you uh, that this does indeed solve the problem. Okay, so I'm back and uh, I've applied some, uh, in this case I've used scotch tape, so we'll see how this well this works. Um, you can barely see it there, but uh, it's, of course because it's clear, but you can see it's it's just over top of those two pins and it goes a little bit down but it stops before it gets to the other side. So um, it's on the fifth and sixth pins, so I'm going to insert this into the socket. Excellent, okay. And now I'm gonna power up the board and uh, we're going to see that the memory size has changed yet again. Or at least that's what should happen. So as you can see, the card BIOS is still initializing, so 
Uh, we haven't affected the operation of the card in any way. Well, you'll notice it says memory changed again. So if I press F1 to run setup, you'll notice that now the memory size is 8 gigs again. So by simply masking SMBus to the card, we can uh, basically restore functionality because the card can no longer fuck with um, the rest of the board. So uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much all there is to it. And uh, this works for, the reason why I didn't even bother to mention the model of this, is this by the way is an IBM um, M1115, but uh, it works for a, a wide range of SAS controllers uh, by LSI, simply because um, they all have this sort of similar issue. I'm not entirely sure what the actual problem is, uh, if it's an address conflict or uh, if it's clobbering something, I, I don't entirely know. Um, I could get out my logic analyzer and actually probe the actual pins and try to get a dump of all the uh, the SM bus output, decode it, and try to see what's going on. Uh, but I just honestly couldn't be bothered. Um, I really don't care. But uh, if anyone else uh, has this issue and they'd uh, they'd love to to probe, I'd, I'd definitely be interested to see what you find. But I just don't have the time to do it myself. So anyway. Hopefully this was helpful for someone, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.